All right, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tyree Cooper, Big Bang Day, based right here in Houston, Texas. And I noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyree Cooper, Big Baby, and this is my studio. I'm a content creator based right here in Houston, Texas. My goal is to be a resource for all musicians through reviews, tutorials, behind the scenes content, and honest podcasts. I don't want to over talk it. Y'all know what the title is. Let's get into the video. Because of you, I'm asked be sucking that hoe, but be talking to people like you good, but you really be sucking that hoe. There's a lot of good people out there, and some of this don't want to have to go over again if you already know some of these tips and tricks. So for the good people, the people who know how to play, go ahead and skip to this part of the video. But for everybody else, let's go ahead and continue with the video. The first thing that you want to look at is the mouthpiece placed on your lips proper. What I've learned is, while you're playing your instrument, your lips, your armature, and your aperture, it's usually one third of the top lip and two thirds of the bottom lip. But make sure that it's centered properly and make sure you aim straight through the center of the mouth. I've seen people who play off to the side and you're putting a lot more pressure on that side of your face and it, it kind of gives a lot of room to, for air to spew out and start spitting out, especially if your armature isn't really tight just yet. It isn't really hard as a rock just yet. Some people have those one third top lip and two, uh, two thirds bottom lip. Sometimes they play like this. Versus having it even like that. It's like they pinch it. What it does is it's hitting the bottom of the mouthpiece and then going into the center of the mouthpiece. And that's why a lot of people sound thin. I know, what the hell? Right. If you don't know if you do it or not, start trying to play some highs, man. Start trying to go up into the upper register and you're gonna start seeing your lip slowly start doing that. Start overlapping the bottom lip. That is pinching. That means that you basically just don't have I'm Mr. Strength, yet. I'm giving all the tools, I'm giving all the cheat codes. Watch this. Have you seen a whole lot of tool players with a whole lot of tape all on their necks and their bits and their mouthpiece and right there where the, where the neck goes in at? The tape is there because a lot of times people are broken their horn because they pushing the mouthpiece on their lips. What that's doing is, is pushing this, like, it's, it's stretching the lips. You're cutting off the blood flow. Yes, it is getting you to low higher notes. Yes, it is allowing you to play a little bit longer. However, it's killing your enduring. It's killing strength of your armature because you're causing this right here to swell up. That's why a lot of times when you swell up, you can actually hit higher notes. You can't do it for a long time now. Can't do it for a long time. But that's what happens and that's the reason why you can be able to hit those higher notes and go for just a little bit longer. But you're really just kind of handicapping yourself because you're killing your endurance. You just have to do a little bit more exercises like long tones and lip slurs and flexibility exercises in order to be able to play for a longer period of time. And that's what I did at first when I first started to learn how to play. Uh, especially on very loud volume. However, that's not what professionals do, and that's what's gonna keep from breaking your horn, 
If you want me to do a separate video, because I have a lot to say about the Amish. I'm about to spill all the, I'm about to spill all the beans. If you want me to do a separate video specifically talking about the Amish and Aperture and all the different placements and all of the different flexibility exercises that you can do, then leave a comment down below and I will do that. It's something called free buzzing. Buzzing without the mouthpiece, without the horn, just straight with the lips. In order to target the right muscles, you have to play at a softer volume and a higher pitch. Try to sound as close to a mosquito buzz as possible. Your finger through your aperture, right here in the center. Remember the whole thing is the embouchure, right there in the center is the aperture. Place your finger right here, Remember the corner mouth inhalation. Or if you play a lower brass instrument, do it for the full extent of your air. If you do that every day for an extended period of time, it could strengthen up the corners of your mouth. It's a step in the right direction. I'm not gonna say that's all it takes, but it's a definitely a step in the right direction. Doing it once a day is enough for most players, but we're not most players. We're the beast mode family. If you wanna be in a beast mode family, you need to do it all day. To this day. Till your face falls off. Okay, if you want me to make a video about anything specific and dealing with the embouchure and dealing with the lips, then let me know down in the comment section. A couple things that I wanted to make separate videos on is dealing with A, a pencil trick, B, either chewing gum, C, I have some warm downs, like everybody knows about warm ups and things of that nature. And I also wanna make a video on what is a proper warm up? Cause a lot of people bro don't be warming up like talking about it bro. Like everybody kind of take out their horn and they start hitting highs and they start hitting lows. No, that's not the way how to do it, man. You gotta warm up properly. Anyway, in dealing with the warm down, um, that's going to be uh, a whole separate video within itself but just a little background. It's just something to loosen up the lips, get the blood back flowing back into your lips so you can be able to go on through the rest of your day without it being swollen or without it being uh, as tender as what it once was when we was at practice. Um, the buzzing or using a burp. A burp is the thing that's on the side of the trumpet. Uh, some trumpet people, some trumpet players have it on the side. I'm gonna put a picture over here to, so you can see exactly what a burp is. And if you wanna buy a burp, I'm gonna have a link in the description. Uh, another thing is actually picturing a uh, mouthpiece hanging from the ceiling. They're just talking about pressure on the actual uh, instrument so you don't keep breaking it. And we have to spend all year trying to fix it. Now you don't got no horns all year because your school can't afford it. And the last thing is, why mouthpieces sound so different? There is some science behind it, but I have to make a separate video in discussing what is the differences between this mouthpiece and that mouthpiece. Does it really even matter? So don't forget to put it in the comment section on what do y'all want to know next. It's a four part series. Right now we're thinking about, the, we're talking about the embouchure. Next video, part two, is going to be talking about the jaw and the cheeks. If you puff out your cheeks and how not to do that. And then the next video after that is gonna talk about the throat. And then the last video is gonna talk about the diaphragm. If you stick all of those four pieces together, you're gonna to be an animal on your horn. 
Go ahead and watch the next video. I'll see you soon. Peace.